I'm Robert Gervel, a professor emeritus in the UCLA Department of Classics. Come with me and I'll show you some of my favorite sites and stories from the first years of Westwood. This is Founders Rock, the first official act of the University of California and the Board of Regents for the newly chosen campus. This 75-ton granite boulder was brought here from Paris Valley, Riverside County, to mark the spot where two men looked out and saw the Pacific Ocean and decided this would be the site for a new campus. The rock arrived on the Barron campus in February 1926. In October of the same year, it was formally dedicated as part of a campaign to win votes for the ballot measure to buy the land. The freshman Sherman Gransel, who attended the ceremony, later described it. There was dirt and weeds and Founders Rock. To build a campus, the university needed a bridge. You can still see the sign with its weight load. This is the first man-made structure on the new campus. Why? Because there was a deep dry bed ravine cut through the campus from north to south. And a bridge was the only way to get from what was then the entrance of the campus beside Founders Rock and the planned quad of buildings on the other side. And where is the bridge? It's still here, buried in the 1940s to create more space and its Roman arches hidden by the heavy concrete retaining walls. When the ravine was gone, the Latin professor Arthur Patch McKinley composed a 14 verse sonnet on the irreparable loss of this natural landmark and wildlife. Every campus needs a flagpole. A wooden flagpole was dedicated with Founders Rock in 1926 to herald the coming of a new campus. This metal flagpole replaced it when the original one cracked and spurted oil. But that's another story. Just look down at its base and see the relief of the fish from the Amazon, the Gimbelli. It was named after the donor of both flagpoles, Jake Gimbel, who sponsored the South American expedition in search of the fish and who gained his own form of immortality. This is the entrance of the library as it simply was called in 1929, before it was named in honor of Lawrence Clark Powell, the university librarian from 1944 to 1961. A bookman at heart and a remarkable man. The library is a holy place and the cold image of this temple is the owl of the goddess Athena, placed in its art shrine with the rays of the sun above its head. Both the owl and light are symbols of wisdom and knowledge. Two worshipers kneel down on each side, one reading a scroll and the other holding a lamp with its flame and show their respectful devotion to the pursuit of learning. Go inside and worship. This is a special place on campus. It's a stone bench on the eastern side of Royce Hall, tucked away and secluded. It was called Senior Bench. First year students were told to find another place to sit. Its inscription reads, the trees of 1931. The senior class of that year planted young trees on the new campus, including these two majestic Himalayan cedars. These evergreen conifers, sacred to some cultures, can grow to over 160 feet. And the saplings that were planted on each side of the bench were intended to represent the growth and strength of the university. Royce Hall is the cathedral of the campus, an outstanding icon of the university's ambitions and achievements. Red bricks of 19 different hues, interlaced with concrete, terracotta, and tile, decorate its magnificent facade of triple arches and twin towers. Look up and see the loggia of the second floor, its ceilings depicted the instruction of the Western world in three stages, ancient, medieval, and modern. Only one of the 12 men represented was alive in 1929 when Royce opened. This man was acclaimed a genius, awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921. Two years after the opening of the Westwood campus, he came to speak at Royce Hall when he first visited Los Angeles 
and met the silent screen star, Charlie Chaplin. Who is he? The College of Letters and Science was formally established in 1923 when the University of California Board of Regents begrudgingly approved the granting of degrees to the junior college, which was then called the Southern Branch. Some mockingly called it the Twig. The same year, the search had begun to find a new campus since the former Los Angeles Normal School site on Vermont Avenue had not enough space. We might think that back then, no one could have imagined how great this newly created institution of higher learning would become 100 years later. But I expect that many did, and it's their assurance and confidence of a better future that should inspire us today.